welcome to this short interview with Professor Hemmington. Uh, he will give a lecture at the University of Humanistics here in Utrecht, the Netherlands. The lecture is about per performative theory of care. Uh -huh. So, first question for you, Professor Hemmington. Can you introduce yourself shortly and tell something about your latest work? Sure. Um, I'm Maurice Hemmington. I am the executive director for University Studies at Portland State University in uh, Portland, Oregon. Um, university Studies is their, like their general education, so I oversee all the general education for undergraduates and um, uh, I am a care ethicist and my latest work, is, uh, and I'm a philosopher, and uh, my latest uh, work is an edited um, uh, anthology uh, with uh, Dan Angster um, called Care Ethics and Political Theory, and it uh, brings together many of the important um, uh, political uh, theorists, philosophers, and also some uh, lawyers uh, and others um, uh, to talk about um, uh, care ethics and where the field is, uh, is going today. Okay. So what are, according to you, burning issues for ethic of care now and in the future? And how would you like to draw attention to those issues? Well, um, there, there's a lot of different ways to think about uh, the um, uh, the burning issues. Um, in, in one respect, uh, the the burning issue is to to get ethic of care uh, known more mm -hmm. uh, by more people. It's still a uh, somewhat marginalized uh, field. Um, there are a lot of um, scholars who don't understand it or, or don't deal with it um, very much. Uh, and I think um, uh, we want that uh, to expand. There are uh, particular concerns about what actually does care ethics mean? Uh, what, is it, what does it mean in different fields? Uh, what is the approach? Is it, you know, should it be um, more theoretical? Should it be more applied? Should it be both? It's, um, it's, it's actually, in some ways, a very intriguing time in care ethics uh, because uh, uh, we're at the, at, the, at the nascent stages of what, uh, you know, what could be a very blossoming uh, discipline. It's only 30 years old, and in the scope of many disciplines that are you know, even thousands of years old, it's, it's relatively new, so it's kind of exciting. It is. And do you have any recommendation for the... Dutch ethics of care to focus on like issues. Um, well, for the the uh, the, the Dutch in, in many ways um, are uh, ahead of the game in, in certain uh, in certain places because you have um, a, a program at the University of Humanistic Studies that uh, um, uh, is uh, uh, coalesced into a community. And we don't um, have anything similar uh, in the States, um, and I don't think it exists in Europe, elsewhere in Europe um, as well. Um, and so I think it would be mostly uh, to um, engage the rest of the world, uh, to, to uh, um, show everybody you know, what you're doing, and um, uh, grow what, what is always already uh, uh, kind of an exciting uh, program here. Great, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Hamilton. Um, care has a radical potential, you claim. Um, can you please explain us how? I think that sometimes uh, people think about care and uh, it sounds like something that is um, uh, very uh, personal mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and you know, between um, a, a few people, but it uh, it also has this kind of uh, internal um, radical uh, radicalism uh, to it because if you can you truly engage others, care, and connect uh, with other people, um, that can be a kind of um, disruptive knowledge to somebody. Uh, it can be very motivating um, kind of thing, and it can um, uh, energize uh, people to act on their behalf. Uh, and so um, I think that in some senses all radical movements historically 
have had an element of, uh, of care in them. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it wasn't explicitly you know, named in that way, but uh, I think it was there, and I, I think the same is true uh, going forward. Thank you very much. Um, can you please illustrate your definition of care and uh, with an example? Uh, I quote your definition. Okay. It's a long one, but a beautiful one. Uh, care is a political embodied performance every iteration uh, of which has the potential to contribute to our dynamic sense of moral identity, adds to our disruptive knowledge of the other, and supports the notion that ethical understanding is a mind-body activity that's ripe for our auto-poetic development. Okay. Uh, yes, it's a, it's a long one, and you know, uh, academics, they like to uh, <laughs> use a lot of words. Um, but um, so uh, with an example, I would say, um, let's say that a, uh, um, a student uh, comes into a teacher's office and um, she's crying. Uh, and the, 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 the uh, instructor could um, react in many different ways. You know, one way would be to um, uh, say, you know, give the person a tissue and say, uh, you know, go, uh, go home and take care of yourself or, uh, and, uh, but another way would be to engage the individual um, in, uh, in questions and uh, find out what the source of the, the, um, uh, the distress is mm -hmm. and, and possibly uh, respond and um, uh, uh, take caring actions. And um, you know, in that example, I think we see the various elements there. The, the caring for the other person, making those decisions, um, and, and, and going deep, there's a kind of a skill there, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, an emotional intelligence um, uh, that, that is uh, demonstrated. And like any other um, skill, there's, there, there are physical and cognitive elements uh, to that skill. And people can develop that skill, and they can perform at that that skill better. Better, you know. Some yes. people are more skilled at doing um, those kinds of things. And what's interesting about human beings is we are able to be both um, subjects and objects. So when I perform, or anybody performs an act of caring, it's not just for other people to see. Other people can uh, uh, who are there or present can see it. I see it in myself. I see myself in this, uh, this caring. And if it is an ideal for me, if I, if I do bring um, good habits, uh, cognitive habits and, and reflective habits um, to it, um, I, can, I can get better at it. And that, I, the next time I do it, I might, you know, I might do it better. And, and the iterations of it can seep into my identity and become more of who I am. And, and, and therefore, I may begin to think of myself as more of that, you know, the caring person who takes the time to ask these questions and respond to somebody better. So, um, it, uh, I think um, that's a way to, to try to, you know, kind of embody that definition. Thanks yeah, for the example. It's a good one. Um, because then I bring it back to daily practice. Um, are you not worried that daily aspects of caring, like cleaning up vomit, are um, aestheticized or forgotten in this manner? Um, well, when you see art as a performance, like theatre. Yeah. So um, I think that um, care is uh, is a performance, and it is a um, there's an aesthetic quality to it, but uh, it is not always easy. Uh, it is no. often very challenging, uh, very difficult, and uh, as you say, you know, cleaning up vomit can fe feel very removed uh, uh, from um, what we think is, you know, reflection, uh, deliberation, <laughs> right? All the uh, all yeah. those kinds of things, uh, but it becomes um, a part of the, you know, the whole um, uh, process. And so I think it's easy to forget that that you're you're caring for somebody when you're doing something like that. Um, but it is a, it is a piece of it is a piece of the whole, and there's um, I never want to claim that um, care is always um, uh, beautiful and, uh, and and 
you know, and lovely and fun, there's there's a lot of uh, difficult Hard parts work. to it. Yes. Yes. yes, thanks. The next question is, care, eth uh, care ethics not only helps to understand and identify the subjectively lived experience, but also through the political lens to understand how identities and subject positions become constructed or rendered invisible within policy. If I look through the lens of vulnerability uh, to caring society, I can see citizens being excluded. Um, I believe identity is also about belonging. Uh, how can a society care for excluded people? Well, I think um, what comes along with care is a requirement to be um, truly uh, responsive and understanding of the other. Mm -hmm. And that includes their, the power and privilege that they have in, uh, uh, in whatever subject position uh, they're at. And so um, to be truly caring is to ask questions, is to um, seek knowledge. There's a certain way that, that um, care is a form of inquiry, uh, really. Yes. Uh, and, and, and so um, you, would, you would be engaging people to, to understand that oppression, make the human connection, and um, take actions that you see you know, uh, uh, accordingly. Um, so I, I think there, that's another way, going back to an earlier question, that it, there's a, there is this kind of radical potential in care, because it can help us build solidarity with marginalized um, uh, uh, individuals. Uh, in the re reality of complex care practices, a nurse spends a lot of time behind the computer with questionnaires about targets and quality from the game discourse. Uh, instead of engaging herself with the ill, uh, not to mention deliberating on her moral identity, and often her performance is invisible. How can our society open up her visibility? Um, I think we need to have more conversations. Um, you know, again, I think it's beautiful that we, the University of Humanistic Studies has this program. Um, we, I, we need to bring care uh, front and center and talk about how important caring is to the, um, uh, the flourishing of any society. Um, it seems that more and more we're there there is evidence growing that um, the old stories that we talked about how society was, the, uh, the kind of dog-eat-dog uh, -dog individuals fighting against one another, have been replaced by notions that it's through um, uh, cooperation, compassion, empathy. That's what's allowed um, uh, you know, societies to flourish. And yet we still don't always value that as much as uh, uh, it, it, it should be. I know that's particularly true in the States. Um, and, and so I think that um, uh, if we put care front and center, then uh, we value the work of, you know, uh, of all the individuals who are engaging in, in, in care, even when it's not uh, you know, particularly visible. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you.